it was disappointing in many ways because the ball up to that had, you know, the schedule had been toing and froing, and uh, in the end, it was made only a two test match series. And when you're playing a big team like India, you know, you want to at least be playing three. And um, so that when you're playing two tests, that, that first test becomes even more important. Um, and so starting well, getting into the series, you know, there's no, there's no real time to find your feet, so you have to be uh, really switched on early on. That first test match against India in 2013 was, uh, was sort of where I felt like the Indian team is starting to change a bit, um, starting to become a really good side away from home as well. I felt that their batters could, could handle our pace and our seam and, and, and the swing, um, like Savirat Kohli, Pujara, all youngsters who were very determined to sort of turn that Turn it around for Indian batters who always seem to struggle in South Africa. Yeah, I was pretty young to test cricket. I remember back then. Uh, I made my debut in 2012 test cricket, so that was a year later. Um, so pretty young in test cricket. Um, obviously playing against India, the powerhouse team. Um, so yeah, it was pretty amazing atmosphere. I remember a lot of home support, but also you, you could feel the Indian support there as well. So. A fantastic start to the test series that game. You know, it's a very daunting um, stadium, especially when it's packed. Um, it almost feels like the crowd are on you because it's so compact. And the field itself is not very big, um, but it's always well kept and the, the wicket's quite spicy and that always makes for a great test match for the batsmen to, if they apply themselves, they get runs and suddenly helps the bowlers with the bounce and the seam movement. Obviously, India at, at the ball ring you know, that is um, a much talked about test match. You know, whenever you play at the bull ring, the pace, the bounce, um, you know, as a bowler, it puts you under, under some sort of pressure, to be honest, okay? because there's a lot of expect expectation from the crowd. You know, you see the ball flying through to the keeper, and finding those sort of lengths sometimes at the, the bull ring can be intimidating. They made a big statement in, in batting first, firstly, uh, when they went, won the toss. Heads is the call, Andy. It is a head. Hey, Mesh, you've won the toss, what are you going to do? Uh, we are looking to bat first, you know, uh, looks like a, a good wicket, you know, definitely different from how it was looking a couple of days back. The wondrous wicket, if you can get it in the right area, you can always ask questions, you know, with an extra bit of pace, extra bit of balance. He's gone for it, man under it. Wow, that was wonderful cricket from the South Africans. Stain is over the moon. Number two for South Africa. Yeah, I had a good start against them. Took a couple of wickets um, and things went well. But uh, it was still, still you know, a long way to go in the test match. That's a fine shot. Shot. Beautiful shot. Had a go at that, he's played it beautifully. Lovely shot down the ground. And pushes the call, he's gonna get back for his first hundred against South Africa. Look at what it means to Vera Kohli. It's his fifth career hundred, it's a second test match hundred out of the subcontinent. He's a fabulous player, is this young man. And he's looking to try and lead from the front. Yeah, the Wanderers first innings can be tough, you know. What, what I find is that um, it, it does do a little bit on day one and two. Uh, maybe a little bit slowly on day one and then day two it really picks up pace. So when it starts to nip, it really nips quickly and you, you tend to find the edges a bit more. And I think... Uh, you know, sometimes in those first innings, you, you can be a little bit tougher. So 280, I still, you know, Coley's 100 got them into a, a good position. It still runs on the board, and we knew that, you know, it would be tough to bat in our first innings. Um, so, yeah, I think Coley's knock was, was, was an important knock for India on, 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 that, on that day one. They got 280, which was a modern, you know, a modest score for the Wonders. You know, and, uh, we thought that you know that we'll obviously you know can get past it. If you get the, the uh, you know the team out of a 280 and the first thing of a test match, you'd be very happy. I kind of figured that we, we would back ourselves to get a good total ahead and, and you know put uh, the Indians under a bit of pressure. It was important for us to sort of find a way just to keep fighting. We didn't bat too well in our first innings. We had a bit of a collapse in the middle order. Bowling. 
He's bowled him left alone. Amler, misjudgment. Oh, that's out. That's dead straight. First ball. There's the in swinger. And gone. Smith goes. Wow, what a little period of play this is for India. Got him. That's him. Gone. Big shout. Gone. Fingers gone up. It's De Villiers gone. Those are situations that are, are, are tough to deal with in the change room. You're in a solid position, you want to, you want to capitalise on it. You know, we've had a, we've done the hard yards to get ourselves that, that, that platform. Um, but people also can bowl well. Um, you know, walking out, we never really got a partnership going at any stage, and suddenly you're six down and you're under pressure. Um, and I think Vernon played a little bit of a rear guard um, innings for us and got us to a respectable total where we weren't too far behind the game. Very good shot from Vernon for Lander. First ball of the day. Strokes that through the covers to bring up yet another Test 50. He has played superbly so far. I remember having a little partnership with Fuff. Um, you know, to get us back into the game, we were in a bit of trouble. Lower order runs, especially if you're in a position, as you say, six down and still a long way behind the game, you know, it's crucial. Uh, and that's why those guys work so hard in their game now. It's important that they, they look to contribute. And often the tail um, you can show sort of the mentality of the team or the, where the team is from a courage perspective. And, you know, I think that was always very important to us as an environment that the, that the bowlers uh, contributed. We got ball at 240 and then they batted, they batted very well. All of a sudden we found ourselves them dominating the test match completely. Um, I remember Mornay getting injured. I was fielding down a third man, finally he can chase the ball. Uh, you know, the, the squad soft on, on, on the foot and went over my ankle and I knew immediately I was in trouble. He's down as well, so that's not a good sign. I'm just hoping he hasn't gone over on his ankle and that's what it's looking like. We operate as a team um, and obviously losing one of your bowlers, you know, leaves a bit of a, a hole or gap, you know, so to speak. And, you know, it, it means that, you know, other bowlers will have to step up more and, and obviously bowl more overs, you know, so we put a lot, of, a lot more pressure on the bowling unit. When you behind the game, you know, every moment is important and you want to have uh, all your firepower uh, at your disposal. Losing more now, I'm actually with, with his long limbs, I'm surprised he hasn't rolled an ankle more, you know. Yeah, it's never a nice feeling when a bowler walks off the field with the injury. Um, we joke about it and say, that's a honey, I shrunk the bowling attack. We had nowhere to go really, um, set for sort of playing the waiting game and having a look at what they're going to set us. Pujara for me is an excellent player, but a player that you feel like you should be able to, to control in many ways. You know, I think uh, he plays very much within his game plan. He tries to wear you down and wait for you to bowl a, a bad ball. Um, and I think that day we were just a little bit loose. He gained some momentum on us. Maybe you get a little bit frustrated and you force the situation a little bit. And, and that, that can happen sometimes when you're behind the game. You know, you just, you're just playing catch up the whole time and you can get frustrated. You can you know, push too hard. And I think at times we did that and he played superbly well, capitalised. Uh, and, and played a, an outstanding innings and, and, and got India to a total that you know, no one get, gave us a chance of getting near. 150. And he just keeps piling them on as Chibiswal Pujara. They ended, ended up setting us a huge total, uh, over 400 to chase in that final innings. Um, and then something special happened. <laughs> I remember feeling extremely good again. We got off to a really good partnership up front, myself and Elvira. Squeezed away. Going to bring up a boundary. Brings up the 100 stand as well. What a good start from these two. And uh, I, I ran myself out. <laughs> um, I always say the slow guys never get run out, but I ran myself out that day. Not scared to get on the track, Smith. He's had to be quick. This is going to be very tight. In fact, I'm not sure it is going to be very tight in the end. Direct hit. Oh, and he's gone. So India have made the breakthrough. Graham Smith has run himself out. I made my debut for the protest batting at seven. But strangely, what happened was the second innings, um, I think it was like the last half an hour or 40 minutes of the day, uh, we were talking about nights, you know, like a night watchman kind of vibe. Um, and I said, well, I'll, you know, I'll go. Um, that's obviously, you know, I, I wasn't a night watchman at the time, um, but it was a time where we needed to be very solid um, and defend and close the day down. And I was fresh off that um, five-week blockathon against Australia. 
Um, so they were pretty happy with my technique um, and in a good place. Went in, got through the night and we were in a good position. Um, and then what unfolded the next day was, was, was special. India seemed to be in control and they were heading into a direction where they're probably going to get to bowl us out just over 300 somewhere there, way short of the total. We were so far out of the game and we were just basically all the chats was just about batting for the draw. But there was, there was a special feeling that day. I, I clearly remember Faf and I having a great intensity at the crease. Um, and India started panicking quite early. They started putting fielders out on the boundary. I remember third man being out for most of my innings, which was quite odd um, and weird in, in, in that sense. So um, we started sniffing a bit of panic in, in their camp. Obviously when you play at Wanderers, the field is so quick uh, and you all score. So even though you're defending, runs, you know, happen. We just kept going and we found a great rhythm and a great um, intensity and pace um, of, of the innings, so our partnership out there. And, they really struggled to stop our ones. Uh, I remember our scoring five to six runs and over without even getting a boundary sometimes. So uh, we were working in small targets and before we knew it, we really came close to that target. As the day is going by, we getting closer and closer and next thing we know, wow, we almost at the total. Yeah, Fuff and Avi were flying. They were scoring and the wicket had gotten really flat and it was actually, it was very easy to bat if you're a good batter, you know. Whipped away. Will it get all the way to the boundary? It doesn't really matter. He's certainly going to get three. And Faf Duplessis completes an outstanding century. And there it is. A.B. de Villiers gets to test match 100, number 18. It's been impressive. It's been required. And in a fabulous partnership with Faf Duplessis. Yeah, so we just kept batting and kept scoring runs. <clears throat> And I think yeah, AB went out first. I tried to run it down to third man, just came back off the wicket a bit and it, I played on onto the stumps. He's chopped that one on. AB de Villiers will be absolutely distraught. There was a stage where I think myself and Fuff came together again. We consolidated a little bit of a partnership uh, and then decided, okay, we're going again for it. And then, very, very silly, run myself out. Oh, he's going to have to hurry. He got the dive in. Has he made it? Gone. Gone by a foot. And it just, like, kind of put a halt on everything. And um, I found myself out there batting with Vernon. Well, you know, the game was tense. We knew Mornay was injured. We knew... Um, you know, Dale and Vernon were batting together with, with Imran to come. We weren't sure if Mornay could bat. Yeah, no, I was there, unfortunately, in the change room. Um, I ruled out, dreading that I had to go, maybe go and bat and hop along with, you know, with, with one, one leg. Firstly, you can't communicate between every single ball to your batters. Um, so a lot of us were also feeling like, now go for it, now don't go for it, go for it. So you can just imagine all the emotion going on in the change room. Imagine what they must be feeling in the middle with no messaging from the side. I said to him, I don't quite know what to do here. You know, we either go for it and one of us get out and then you've got Emi to come in and, and Mourne and they could get two good balls and we could lose this test and all that hard work goes to, goes to nothing. Or we, we block it out and we, we go to Durban 0-0 and, and we give them a beating there and um, we decided to block it out. It was really tough to, to handle that situation and I thought they did the right thing. Yeah, so we closed, we closed shop uh, as a team. India decided to go with the tactic of running and bowling short to us uh, so, and, and spreading the field. So the only way that we could really score runs was by playing the pull shot and, and hitting the ball in the air, essentially, you know, and giving, putting ourselves at risk of getting out. I think the most disappointing thing was the crowd's reaction at the end. I think we had done extremely well. I remember the crowd being quite hostile that, that we never quite got over the line. And then obviously it was a draw, and then the last ball, Dale decided, why not have a bit of a fun here? The whole field's up, so I'm just going to drill one into the stands, and he smashed it like third tier. It was a full toss, and um, I was so frustrated. I didn't even try and hit it. I just kind of played like a on drive, and it went. I hit a massive six. He's popped him into the stand just so that everyone can say, why didn't he do that earlier? Well, I'll tell you why. He didn't pitch it up earlier.
What a finish to a game. And it took it down to like needing like single figures, you know, to win the game. And it was like everyone was upset, you know, how did we not score eight runs, you know, and um, uh, we had to deal with that. We could have gone for it, of course, you can always go for it. Uh, and, and probably in hindsight now, when we look back at it, um, it would have been such a special day creating a, a world total world record for chasing a total. Obviously, I'd not take the run and then we win the game, but even after me, um, try and push a little bit further. But it was a different situation because it was only a two-match test series. What seemed to be a bad draw, we were still confident playing the rest of the series, knowing that we played a really good hand at the end of the test match and we could take a lot of confidence going to the rest of the series, and we were spot on with that. The beautiful thing was that we went down to Durban, we won that game, um, Callis got 100 in his last test match, I got five wickets and I think I even got man of the match and I had to deal with the heat that came with it but I went down there and I had a, a point to prove. You know.